Hi guys, welcome back. So if you've been following this video series, you know that for the last several weeks I've been kind of avoiding modern era figures just because I had done so many for a while that I thought, you know, we needed a break and I wanted to make sure I balanced kind of the videos I was doing. But because it has been a while now, I thought it would be okay to return to the modern period or at least sort of the 20th century in this case. <clears throat> So, I'm going to be painting this figure for you guys. He is from Warlord Games, and he is part of their World War II Russian Sniper Pack. Obviously, this particular miniature is not a sniper. At least he's not equipped with a sniper rifle. He's got an SMG, and he's using a field telephone to communicate something. Who knows? It's really a pretty simple figure, actually, but the main thing about it, and the reason I've chosen it, is he's wearing a rather interesting sort of uh, jumpsuit. The uh, Russian Sniper Corps did make use of some limited camouflage, and especially their snipers, well, that's what I just said, the snipers basically had a sort of camouflage jumpsuit that they wore, and this guy is has that on too, and I'm going to be showing you how to paint that. Now, you know, I know I mostly focus on the Germans because they had tons of camo that they used, lots of different patterns, and a lot of it was kind of tricky. But there were some other people in World War II, believe it or not, who did use camouflage too, besides the Germans, even though, yeah, they get a lot of attention. But, there, yeah, there were other people, and the Russians are one of them. Now, the camo pattern we're going to be doing today is relatively simple. It's sort of on a light green or light brown field, and then it has some very large, hard edge splotches. They're, I think it will really be quite easy to paint, but I know that that, you know, it's good to have a lot of variety here and people want to really see all the different possible camo patterns out there. So I thought, you know, hey, why not? This should be sort of an interesting change and, you know, once again, another tutorial on greens and browns, sort of those khaki and buff colors and another pattern that can be added to your repertoire. All right, so we're going to start out here by base coating the jumpsuit and the color that I see most commonly on this particular piece of clothing seems to be sort of a brownish green khaki color. Uh, there were variants that were more brown, more green, but I'm going to kind of take an average here. So my base coat is going to be a mixture of Vallejo khaki and Vallejo brown violet, which is a weird color if you ask me because the color is neither brown nor violet. It's actually sort of a darkish bright green shade. And my base here is going to have uh, a larger proportion of brown violet in it just because I want to get the color nice and dark and khaki by itself is fairly light so we're gonna go with that and it is rather more green right now that I want but we're gonna fix that in subsequent steps once the base coat is dry I'm going to apply a heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade everywhere this will help get extra contrast down in all of the folds and creases and it will also help make the whole color scheme a little bit more brown and balance out that green that we got from our base layer And now I'm going to start the process of highlighting this figure. My first highlight layer is once again going to mix the brown violet with the khaki, but this time the majority of the mix should be khaki. You just want a little bit of brown violet in there just to darken things up a little bit, make it a little bit greener. You know, we don't want to go too far, uh, too fast. So uh, I'm just applying this. I'm using a fairly thin mix because I, as always, I want to apply the paint in layers and I want the blending to be easier and of course thinner paint will simply blend a lot easier. So I'm going to, as you can see, I'm going to go over most areas with this color, uh, the large areas like the flat of his back and the like. I'm going to be especially careful to apply the color very thinly here and blend it out, spread it around as you can kind of see I am doing. Uh, the places you really do want to avoid painting or all of the of all of the folds the down in his clothing and because of the way he's laying there are a lot of very deep folds and creases and you want to keep paint out of those at this point we've got th those nice dark color that we got from the wash and we want to leave that largely intact so I'm going to continue working over the entire figure uh, with the first and initially fairly thin layer and then I will go back again and I will apply a second coat and build up 
extra uh, color on areas where I want there to be just basically more light and more emphasis. I'm then going to continue highlighting using uh, this time just a pure khaki which I have again thinned down so that I can apply it in fairly transparent layers. And I'm just going to keep working it over the same areas where I want there to be light and building up color and of course because this is the second layer I'm going to be applying less of the paint focusing it on increasingly higher creases and areas that would be hit with more light. For example, the hood of his jumpsuit obviously is going to want to end up very light, so every step of the highlight process is you're going to want to apply paint to that area because it needs to get very, very bright. And of course, because this uniform is actually fairly simple to figure out how you should highlight because there are so many heavy folds it's just very easy you just know you need to focus these these highlight colors on the tops of the creases and you know it's that's very nice it's very straightforward so uh, just as we did before go back over the whole model uh, go in a couple times if you need to just to build up sufficient color in the areas you want it and avoid uh, being too extreme in one go. And now for my final highlight, I have mixed some Foundry Boneyard Light into my khaki, but it doesn't have to be that color. You could use whatever sort of light cream color that you like. It really won't matter that much. And I'm just doing as I did in the last two steps, focusing on the areas where I want there to be a lot of light hitting, so the tops of all the strong folds and creases, the top of this hood, as I already mentioned, just continuing to build up that color. And this is a quite a great big step lighter than the last shade that I applied, so you're going to be, want to be a little bit more careful about it. You're going to want to blend a little bit more. I'm also using this color as an edge highlight, so besides putting it on those high creases, there are some seams in his clothing, especially along the back and along the legs of his pants, and I'm going to be fine lining along those seams because, as I've said in earlier videos, a really great way to add detail and sort of make a figure look finished is to do fine lining along the edge of a crease, especially if you make sure there's a dark color down in the crease itself, which I've managed in this case by virtue of that wash that I applied earlier, or depending on the situation, you can just make it using a very dark paint that you put down in there. But in any case, it's a very good idea to uh, highlight along creases. And I always enjoy this last highlighting step, particularly because you really start to see sort of the finished results. And this last highlight, even though it should be the most subtle you should i mean not not the most subtle but you should apply it most sparingly even though you're probably putting the least of this color on your figure it always has the most pronounced results so it's it's a very satisfying way to finish highlighting a specific area Okay, so after you finish uh, highlighting the jumpsuit, it's time to add the camouflage dots. And now I'm gonna have to make a horrible confession. For some reason, I didn't record myself painting the camo splotches on. And that's like the worst thing, because that's probably one of the biggest elements of this whole figure. And I'm really sorry, but I cannot go back and repeat that action for you. Uh, I'm really sorry, I don't know what happened. Anyway, the good news is at least it's not a very difficult camo pattern to paint, I think you can figure it out pretty well just from looking at uh, what I did. And I'm going to show you the finished pattern just in a little bit as I continue with the figure. However, I did want to just take this time to talk a little bit about what I did do. I, the pattern on this smock is basically a, a number of very large sort of amoeba-like patterns. People even sort of call this amoeba camouflage sometimes because the, the splotches really, they look like some kind of paramecium with sort of little blobby things coming out the sides. And the blobs are usually a kind of a reddish brown color. At least that's what I made them. Uh, and you don't want to apply too many. They should be applied sparingly. It's not like most camo where there's the pattern's really pretty dense. In this case, you just want a few really large splotches here and there. And that's what you're going to see in a minute. But I did want to quickly go over the colors I used to do that. 
I, I applied a base coat or I sort of roughed out the shapes using Foundry Bay Brown Medium. And then I went back in with uh, Foundry Chestnut Shade because that really gets that red brown in there. And I applied that as a highlight color. So where I had put the kind of splotches over heavily creased areas, I applied that chestnut as a highlight and just really avoided the deep creases so that I got some definition. And then finally, I mixed some Boneyard Light into my chestnut shade and I applied a third and final highlight. And that, of course, I applied, I tried to apply that very sparingly, really only where the blobs intersected with very um, creased areas. And I really wanted to get a high highlight going. Um, and you'll see just in a minute exactly how that worked out. Um, once again, I am really sorry about this. I've never lost footage like this before, but somehow I thought I was recording when I wasn't. So I'm just, I'm just really glad. I think that you guys should still be able to work out how to paint these just from looking at them. They, they're not, this is, there's not some big trick or secret or it's not really difficult like some of the camo patterns I've done. So I think you could probably just kind of figure this out on your own. Okay, so here you are indeed. Here you can see those finished um, sort of splotchy patterns on the camouflage. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of, you know, what you need to kind of be going for with the colors I mentioned. And I'm going to go straight on then and paint his helmet or what parts is exposed. I am base coating it here with a mixture of layer dark green and German gray. I am then going to take just uh, dark green as a first highlight and then finish off by uh, mixing some Vallejo khaki into that dark green, sort of blending that out and using that as the sort of uh, highlight on the front. Next, I am going to be working on his shoes and a couple other little assorted bits, which should be black or kind of gray. Uh, I looked online, it seems that uh, Russian uh, boots were a black leather, so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm base coating them just using Vallejo black. The other areas that I'm going to be making black at this point are the um, handpiece for his uh, field telephone and also the crank handle. Uh, I just did some quick Googling on uh, Russian field telephones from this period. They appear to be sort of a dark brown base, but then with sort of black plastic parts. So those areas are going to get a base coat as well. I'm then going to continue highlighting those areas. I'm going to start out using just Vallejo German Gray as my sort of basic highlight on the black areas. And you can see that's going to go everywhere. Uh, then I'm going to create a higher highlight by mixing some Vallejo Neutral Gray into the German Gray and sort of continuing to lighten up areas like the edges of the leather pieces and the sort of the tops of his um, toes, uh, a little bit on the sort of the hand piece where light is hitting, those kinds of areas. Uh, and then when I'm done, I, I actually then put another highlight on it just by mixing a little bit more neutral gray and to get even lighter shade and just continued just adding that but then in an, an even smaller area to places where the light was hidden. The way I finished this then was to take that highlight shade that I made and I mixed a bit of a layer of chocolate brown into it just to give the gray sort of a brownish cast and I applied that then sort of the most high highlighted areas on his shoes only and I did that just to get a little more of a leather feel even though they're black leather I wanted there to be a little sort of brown tinge coming through and I didn't do this on the black plastic areas of his field telephone so just that should just really go on to the boots only. Now our sniper seems to be carried a looted German uh, submachine gun and a looted German ammo case. At least that's what it looks like to me. So that's how I'm painting it. I am going to base coat the ammo case using the uh, Vallejo khaki gray. And then I'm going to darken it further with an Agrex Earthshade wash. Once the wash is dried, I'm going to reapply the khaki gray color just to lighten up some of the areas that have the wash on them a little bit, of course, avoiding the recesses. And then I'm going to highlight further, especially sort of along the edges and the top by mixing a bit of the Boneyard Light again into my khaki gray color. And you can see how I'm going to be applying that 
really just sort of to the edges as sort of an accent. And now I'm going to be base coating both the field telephone and also some brown leather areas on this figure since um, I want to use the same base color for everything, which is German camouflage black brown, again from Vallejo. So here you can see I'm painting the body of the field telephone. There's also some leather straps attached to both sides. You can kind of see going off into the shadows. I'm going to base coat them with the same color. I'm also going to be painting his helmet strap in this color and, all, and then going around to the back and base coating his belt in, in the dark brown and also the um, sort of leather straps on his ammo case in this particular color. And I'm going to be painting all the leather areas in the way that I usually do, which involves starting out with a base of a bay brown medium. I'm going to be putting that on the telephone too, especially sort of towards the top, as you can see, and kind of blending down. And you can do this in kind of a mottled, splotchy way on the field telephone uh, box, because from what I saw of the pictures, it was sort of a very dark brown color with some sort of patination on it, I guess. So, you know, kind of feel free to be, uh, not to be perfectly smooth. I am also applying Bay Brown Light to the top of the field telephone. Using, I'm gonna use it both as an edge highlight and apply it to the top in that sort of modeled way, again, blending down. I'm not gonna put that on the other leather areas, though. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use the Bay Brown uh, Medium for that. Um, and then I'm going to continue on highlighting the leather in the way that I usually do with leather. So I'm going to be taking a chestnut brown me um, shade here, as you can see, and I'm going to be applying it sort of the tops of all the leather areas and sort of blending it downwards. Actually, this guy has such small leather areas that you it really, there's not, it's really kind of trivial. You don't have to worry about it too much. You just want to apply it fairly thinly and blend it out, not make it too strong. And then I'm going to finish off by taking the chestnut medium as usual, and I'm going to be applying that to the real top edges, all the real sharp edges of the leather areas just very sparingly to, you know, just to get a little bit of extra color and a little extra wear. And to finish off, I'm going to really quickly hit up the metal areas, which are basically his uh, SMG and sort of part of the handle of the, the crank handle of the field telephone, not the actual grip, which is going to be just the black plastic, but the, but the sort of the crank part is going to be metal. I'm base coating these areas with a mixture of Vallejo German Gray and, Val and Vallejo uh, Air Gun Metal. As usual, there should be way more of the gray in there than the gun metal to start off. Then. To highlight that, you can add in more of the gunmetal to get a more metallic shade. It's just more pr pronouncedly uh, metallic, and I'm going to use that as a very light highlight on the gun, uh, particularly because, of course, as we've said, with these modern guns, they shouldn't be too shiny, they shouldn't be too metallic. They were very dark metal, very and not very shiny, so be sparing here. You can be a little bit more, or a, a little bit less restrained on the crank because it doesn't really matter there. And I'm going to finally just take pure gun metal and use that on the gun, really. That's really only going to be an edge highlight on really um, sharp areas and on areas of the gun where I think there would be extra wear, where he'd been handling a lot, because there uh, the finish would get a little bit more worn down and you'd have more exposed sort of shiny metal happening. Okay, and here is our finished sort of Russian sniper figure, though he's not really a sniper because he doesn't have a sniper rifle, but we assume he's part of some kind of sniper team or something. He's involved with sniping, let us just say. Um, I hope, I really hope you found this tutorial useful. I know that I left out the, the, the camo blob painting part, and this is like one of the most important things, and I feel like crap about that. I'm really sorry. But I really do hope that you still took something away from this. I mean, I hope like my section on uh, painting and highlighting the base of, this, of, the, of the jumpsuit will have been useful because that really is actually 99% of getting this figure right because the splotches are one very, not, there's not very many of them. They're relatively large and they're an easy shape to paint. They shouldn't be, I don't think they should be challenging for anybody and I think you can, hopefully you can really just look at what I've done here and see, you know, what, how they should look. It, this is, this is not something that, that should be complicated or require any trick and, you know, it's, it, this is really, this is really, really rudimentary camouflage here. It's, it's, it's not a hard pattern. So, uh, yeah, my apologies for that, but you know, I, I hope you still kind of 
you know, you sort of can be getting something out of this video, something about blending, highlighting, or, you know, painting uh, leather again, or, you know, whatever. Uh, I will be doing later on just a, a standard, more sort of generic World War II Russian soldier, so that may be helping, you know, everyone out who just wants you know, sort of a more general guide to paint these figures, because I know this is a little bit of a specialist, and most people are not going to have too many of these guys, but, you know, I think that he's a nice sort of, kind of interesting, different figure if you want to, you know, mix up your force a little bit. So, as always, please leave a like, if, if you, because it helps me out if you enjoyed this video, I share this, favorite it, you know, leave me comments, and I fully expect to see you all complaining that <laughs> I forgot to film the splotches, but that's okay, I understand, but I want to hear from you anyway, and if you haven't already, you can always subscribe and keep up with what I'm doing, and I, I will definitely be back next week, and I will not leave out bits next time, so you'll be getting a complete painting tutorial without any bloopers like there were this time. Uh, so, uh, once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.